and Pacific Rim the Black. Today he joins us to discuss the role of the stalwart Marty. Please welcome Martin Glover! Next, he's an actor whose body of work includes American Gods, Tape Heads, Freaked, which are amazing comedies if you haven't seen them, appearances on several versions of Star Trek, and of course, Once Upon a Time. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of the hapless Pinto in Pirates of the Caribbean. Please welcome Lee Ehrenberg! Watching you, you're not actually doing it. So let's just check in with a little gratitude from this side to this side. We thank you for being here. Um, we thank you for enjoying, uh, for being fans of us and of our work. Um, I would like to say I live at the beach thanks to you. So I do appreciate it. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to, to second uh, that. Um, it's definitely a chance for us to. Uh, uh, meet the fans and say thank you, and uh, and to you know hear people say lovely things. I know that in particular, I, I sometimes get a bit emotional because people you know will often say to me things like, you know, I had quite a difficult childhood, and uh, my go-to place was Pirates of the Caribbean, and uh, and that really moves me. Um, I'm, oh, I think she's going now as well. Yeah, here we go. So um, those things are really. And that's really also funny. another way to say you're really freaking old now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you when we go like we've known each other for yeah. twenty years you know, so in the blink of an eye, who you know when we started. Yeah. But in the blink of an eye, you know. So this is the thing. Always say, the, tell people that you love that you love them. Never take any day for granted. Live with intention. Um, Surrender the small stuff and go big or go home, you know? Only worry about the things you can control, which is never another person, and usually very little. And eat tacos a lot. A lot of tacos. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a taco, taco. I got a tattoo. Don't eat tacos, I have a tattoo on my head written on my arm that I... Eat tacos? Yeah, no, probably. But I'm gonna get, um, live for today, don't worry about tomorrow because you can't change yesterday. I came up with that in like sixth grade and I've always wanted to yeah. I mean, actually that's the next level of awareness, right? Because listen, being an artist, being an actor, freaking sucks. We're up here telling you how great it is. But the truth is, you know, we, we sit around a lot more than we work, even if you're successful. Um, you have to stay positive. We deal with a lot of rejection and you have to learn to love it. And so when you, I like to say, listen, I like to say that we're actually, we're craftsmen. It's what, it's a yeah, reason I, I like that. It's it. Scream Actors Guild. So it's a guild of craftsmen. We make a pair of shoes. You're gonna decide, is Pirates of the Caribbean Skechers or is it Ferragamo? So the audience gets a chance to elevate or not elevate the project. And with Pirates, what happened was the studio bet on Haunted Mansion. Is the genre of pirates, I don't know. And so the audience, our relationship to you guys, made, made this thing happen. 
Never forget that it's really about you and what you like that decides our fate. In fact, um, I heard recently, I was talking to a guy from the studio and uh, he said that because of the failure of Haunted Mansion and another one they did. Country Bear? The, I think maybe it was, yeah. They were very close to cancelling Pirates just before we started to shoot them, uh, which would have been weird for all of us, I think. But, um, but they made it, and then I couldn't believe within two weeks it was one of the biggest hits ever to... It was unreal. And, and let's be honest, you know, we, no one knew what the hell Johnny was doing. <laughs> no, no one, no one had ever seen that before. That was next level nailed it. I'm gonna uh, base a character on, uh, let's see, a rock star, and then I'm gonna mix in some Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> I mean, it's an inspired thing that we were so lucky to be a part of, you know? Well, what, what was um, doubly um, freaky about Johnny is that it, it, he came fully formed day one, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, it was like he had really thought it through, and it was he, he invented in an instant on the first take a legendary film character, which is just extraordinary. As did we, by the way. <laughs> no one's ever laid with things better. But I'll be honest too, it's the building in, it's the building in of those images on that first movie, right? Of you with the yeah. pigs, which, yeah. you know, I grew up in Southern California. Right, so you know. So I was going, I, I always wanted to be a pirate of the Caribbean, because that was my ride, you what? know? And I used to go to the park because my uncle was into swing dancing. And so the Carnation Plaza at the Old Kingdom, when I was a kid, used to have Count Batesy, the great swing bands, and it was happening. And so that was the first place where my uncle, in my life, when I was a kid, be back by six. And it was the days of the e-tickets. You still have the ticket book, you know? And so to live a kid's dream and to be sitting here right now, representation of you, can manifest a childhood dream, you know? And uh, to have it all come together like that, that is the alchemy that the artist lives for. Just get out of the way and let, let the magic happen. And that's kind of what getting all of, I mean, I'm like, they couldn't find short, bald, and crazy in London. No, they and couldn't, then, yeah. We looked really hard, but... Uh, <laughs> What was the audition and casting process for you initially in the beginning? What was your individual pirate's origin? Well, well I, actually, I was actually working on Haunted um, Mansion, the uh, one with Eddie Murphy, and another one, a, a Looney Tunes movie. And I had ran into a stunt guy that I was working with, and he was the one who told me, Hey, Marty, you, uh, you need to go and check in with George Woogie, the stunt guy, over at Pirates of the Caribbean. And I'm like, the heck is Pirates of the Caribbean, right? I knew what the ride was. Yeah. They're gonna make a movie and blah, blah blah blah. So I put my name in, and right away they're like, "We'll find something for him." And then I literally started off as just a, uh, even though I was I was on a stunt contract, I was just a background, you know, just a background pirate. But obviously I stood out a little bit more than the other guys in Jack's crew, and I was lucky and able to parlay that into you know. Go ahead. Parlay. <laughs> See the way he slipped that in there? He's always trying to slip something. I know. Um, I mean, for me, it was really lucky I got the part. Because they, the, most of the auditions, did you, you auditioned in London, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And everyone did. Yeah. And they would have everyone that came in for either Murtaugh or Mulroy or Pintel and Rigetti read the sides. So they saw hundreds <coughs> of dudes. And, and so the lucky break for me was that Gore is a stickler for, for casting. And Mickey Rooney was busy. No, oh, shush. Sh <laughs> Mickey Rooney really don't got no short and crazy on me. But that was, you know, it's, that's what it takes sometimes, right? They couldn't find short, I said they couldn't find short, bald, and crazy in London. That was my break. And then, you know, the line that got me the movie was an hello, puppy. It was two lines after in the scene. So I'm in, I'm in there with Gore, I've done an audition, made it through the first to have a call back with him in his office, and I'm the first actor to go in, because I was early, I was way early, and I thought for maybe I was the only actor for the part. And then 10 dudes where I'm like, oh, you're better than me, you're famous, and they show up, and I go in first, 
I'm doing my thing. Gore's got this little camera. He's auditioning us and he's looking on this little first little mini DVD thing. And it gets to the part of the scene when um, I go, hello, Bobby. And she goes, parlay. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and it was the what. Was, that's it. That's my guy. Because I could play stupid well. <laughs> and it was just, honestly, actor wise, it was a beat in the scene that I had never even fucking thought of. Part of my life. <laughs> you know, I put all my eggs in the hello, Bobby. And all the stinky, I'm the rapey pirate guy, you know? I'm a funny rapist, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but it's the fact, movie acting, what makes us all memorable in our performances from an A to Z is the ability to say one thing with your eyes while your mouth is saying something different. So Pintel is saying what when in his eyes it's like, how the heck does she know about our special code? And that, that to Gore was like, I, that layers that moment. That sets up the fact that she's gonna be king of the pirates at the end of the movies. Yeah. That sets up that she's already got the gold necklace and that she, in fact, is the most badass character in this world. I, I tell people that all the time. Like, so listen to Sparrow. Yeah. It was always about this little girl. And it's her was, story. Yeah, king of the pirates. So that's mine. Who is it? <laughs> Mom, I'll call you later. <laughs> and now I'll add this too. Uh, a lot of people don't realize playing stupid, unless it's for absolutely for 100% laughs, is a bit of a skill. It's a bit of a balance. I mean, comedy is always dangerous business. The secret to comedy is dead sincerity. Yes. Right? You never play the laugh, right? And uh, it was lucky that I, you know, my, I'm a th I trained in the theater. I love playing the scenes, I love being an actor, and so whenever I audition, I sh I, even if I don't get the job, I know that it's my chance to show who I am. And then the casting director's job is to remember the people she doesn't cast, and find, oh, that guy was great, but not right for this one, I'm gonna get him in. And that's the difference between the pro and say the, the newer person that comes along. I know I'm not gonna get every gig, but I'm always going to try and go in there and leave my mark. You are auditioning to be invited to audition again. Yes, sir. How does BMB was? Um, well, well, I was uh, I, I was uh, having a birthday party in my on my uh, back garden, and um, somebody said to me, "When are you supposed to go to an audition today?" And oh, I God. said, oh. "I said, yeah, but it's an American movie. I go up for them all the time, and I never get them." And they said, well, you kind of give yourself a chance. You might." I said, well, look, I've had a bottle of wine now. I'm a bit tipsy. <laughs> and, uh, and she said to me, well, you're going to play a pirate. It doesn't really matter how drunk you are. <laughs> so, um, so she took me along. She drove me there. And th th there was just a message. A goal wasn't there. Um, there was a message saying, tell a story. And so I, I told the piratey story. And they offered me the job the next day. Um, so. It was, it was absolutely extraordinary. I mean, I was that close to not bothering going. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember the story? I've never heard this one. Do you remember the story? Just make it up. I, 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 think, I, I think he wanted me to talk about sea turtles. And oh. so he <laughs> so yeah. started riffing on the hair of the back of the sea turtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Um, I mean, go on. Well, I'm just going to say that is one of the other stories. They, they, when we did get greenlit, right? I mean, the pirate genre had been long dead. dead. Um, the... What was that, Brendan Harlan, Virginia Davis? Like, Cutthroat Island. Cutthroat Island, yeah. Right, did it do great. Dave Bailey, oh, God rest his soul, was in there. Yeah. Um, so Ted and Terry, our writers, they said, okay, we're only getting one crack at this genre. We're gonna throw every gag we got into the first movie. Yeah. Never thinking they were gonna get another bite of the apple. Yeah. And then they had to re-engineer all those jokes, like sea turtles. Right. It's like, oh God, we gotta make that work again. And that's what Johnny was like. Escape, sea turtle, back of the thing, or whatever it was. Next level, though. And uh, that brings my other question. Um, a very common question I'm sure you've been asked always comes up. Did you always know it's going to be a success was being made? I always like to parlay that into when did you get to realize that first? Did he just was... say parlay again? <laughs> <laughs> when did you each, for you individually, when did you realize that 
this is really exceeding expectations and finding a cult fandom. Well, well, well for me, it was um, when my agent did the deal, um, he said, I, I've asked for a, a little extra money if this film makes some more money. He said, uh, no film has ever made that much money, so don't expect to see it. It's just something we'll do. I got it in two weeks. So I thought, this film has done really, really well. And then it was, wasn't long before we got the call for, uh, to do the next two together. Yeah. We did them back to back. So that was quite extraordinary. We actually, when we started, uh, well, it's funny because I, I hadn't seen Lee in a while, and all of a sudden I get a call from Penny Rose, who's a costume designer, and she's like, Monty, uh, can you come down to the, uh, get a fitting? And I'm like, Penny? And she's like, yes, Monty, it's Penny Rose. And I, I go, a fitting for what? She goes, Monty, have they not called you? Like, for what? She goes, they're doing two more Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm like, I think all she heard was <laughs> to the hotel and just go in the room and there's Lee and then we just knew it. Yeah. The funny thing is, we did two and three back to back, but we actually shot three without a script because there would be scenes, Gore would be like, oh, this would be great to have the crack in them on this position. Yeah. And they would go and pan it and come back and, you know, the guys would make it up and, you know, they're, they're walking on nothing, they're just walking on foam or just a, a set of CGI. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was just amazing the things that Gore and, and, and Darius and all those guys yeah. were we, I mean, honestly, like, we're, it's a team sport movie making, right? It's one thing, we get a lot of the credit because we're the guys in front of the camera, but there's a thousand people on Pirates behind the camera. And so I think we know as actors that we do it for the thousand behind the camera. We want that crew guy to be proud of wearing a pirate shirt. You know, and that's what happened. When I knew it was a hit, I'll tell you when I knew it was a hit. It was pretty early on, actually. Uh, I didn't have that in my deal, and I should have fired my agent, Kevin. I, really <laughs> sure. um, I was just lucky to have a job. Um, no, but it was the fact that in those days, so we're talking, was that 2003, um, studios would, would mess up. I got it. I'm the worst, at, I throw in that swear words all the time. But the, the studio would screw up their own project by overselling it like to Taco Bell for toys before the movie ever came out. And I had a, I knew in my brain for maybe one or two years before that that any time a movie came out already pre-marketed, it was a flop, right? So we didn't have any of that. And so I knew when we were a hit when that has to be the greatest pirate I've ever seen turned into that McDonald's commercial. And that was within the first month. At the time, Mickey D was probably the most powerful, uh, you know, kind of one of the bigger corporations in the world, and they jumped on the train. The studio is always going to try and sell it to recoup their money early on, get you in there for a taco and get a little free toy. But if you don't know who the characters are, why do you want the toy? Right? So. It's a perfect example of they don't even know what the hell they're doing all the time. They, I mean, they didn't know what Johnny was doing, right? They, they, wanted, they were disturbed by the fact that they didn't know, you know? And the trust that Bruckheimer had in all of us and in the filmmaking, Gore had the ring come out when we first started shooting. Prior to The Ring being the number one movie uh, for two or three weeks in a row in October of that year, the producers were there every day, all day, watching every shot. As soon as he had a number one movie in the can, those dudes were on to the next project because they knew they had the right guy helming the, the film. So you got to get a lot of things right. And sometimes what it really needs is the reviews. Don't forget, too, that in those days there were very few to uh, multi multiplexes. Yes. So showing changed. The fact that our movie was too long, two hours 45, it robbed the movie theaters of an extra screening, right? Costing theater owners even more money. So what they did when Pirates 2 came out, now suddenly we have seven screens in a movie theater. I don't know that, that for the young people here, prior to that, if a movie, if a triplex was a big movie place, and the theaters were giant, they weren't tiny little cinemas, right? Pirates was the very first movie to play on six screens in one movie theater. 
So we started that with Dead Man's Chest. Prior to that, it would just be one screen for that movie, one screen for that. These were digitals. This was film prints. It was film, too. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, there's another thing I'd like to say about that. What what happened over the 20 years um, was, apart from the changes in the way they're shown, the way they're shot, and anybody will tell you who works for Marvel now that um, a lot of the joy of filmmaking has been taken away by green screen. You know, back in the day when we wanted to split a ship in half, we split a ship in half. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now, uh, you know, now they show you a picture and say it's going to look like this. And you go, okay, great, I'll wander around this green room and, and see what I can summon up. Yeah, it does so, take a little, I mean, there's nothing like being on location. Yeah, it's terrific. It's like no acting required. Like we were in this, uh, we were, remember in the uh, Maelstrom in, in, in the third movie, the final sequence, right? We're in an airplane hangar. We have, we're on two giant ships that are on gimbal rigs, which basically means they rock back and forth to simulate the ocean. There's like 500 wind machines. There's a full rain system. There's all these explosions gonna happen. And they go, just stand on the deck of the ship and pretend you're in a hurricane. I was like, there's no acting required. <laughs> Just standing there for one second, you're in a hurricane. And, and that's all credit to Jerry Bruckheimer, the legendary Golden Age producer. Um, I mean, he, he really tells the story. He gives the players the tools, and we were very, very lucky, especially, like, say, on the, I would say more so on the second and the third, because the first one was shot a lot in Hollywood. But we were on location for pretty much everything. Two and three had a real black girl built that was an actual ship to sail. Um, and I did Waterworld. I know a lot about making movies on the water, and it's 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 a complex deal. And when, in the first movie, when we were working on the barges, it was a bit of a cluster because turning around, you did tugboats, reversing the shot. It was a big ordeal of time wasting. And the second movie was just, the guy drove it with a joystick. They took a cargo ship, cut it at the waterline, and built the pearl around it. So it was like a twin diesel rocket ship of a pirate ship. And then, then we would take boats out. Our, our trailers would be on a barge in the middle of the sea. You take a speedboat to work. Uh, yeah, and then you, and when you wrap, it's sunset, and you're going 50 knots across the bay. And, Unreal. Celebrities coming out like one year. Oh, Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett, and then there was another time Jerry's coming out. And I'm a huge hockey guy, being from Detroit. And I'm like, holy shit, that's Chris Chelios. <laughs> and it, not really that, but here comes this rookie up with the Chris Chelios. And it's uh, um, Crosby. 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 <laughs> this guy's huge, right? I'm like, okay, well, good luck. Uh, back to the Detroit Red Wing over here. Yeah, but. Yeah. Oh. Jerry was a big hockey guy. Yeah, Jerry has like a, an arena in Tennessee where he invites a lot of like former and even guys today in the NHL. And he's, God, he's close to 80, right? And he skates and he plays hockey. Yeah. He it's kind of like Putin. He does score a lot of goals. <laughs> like when they, you know, Putin plays hockey and suddenly he's like, eight goals for Vladimir. Yeah, who's going to hit Vladimir? Same thing with Jerry Bruckheimer. And no one's. No one's smoking that dude in the boards. So, one more thing, I'll jump into the audience. Uh, For each of you, what was the craziest day you had on a pirate set? Every single one. (laughs) Which is fair. Uh, Well, there's, sadly, there was one um, that's on the the back of uh, the DVD end, too. Uh, Kevin and I were in the air for quite a bit of it in the boat cage. And... I was not great it, with, even though I'm a stunt guy, for some reason I still get motion sickness. And trust me, I plastered the black pearl with, with bars. But <laughs> a lot of guys did, until we got hold of that phony, and then it was like, you were, you were do your acting, and then you'd see me and Lee and everybody all like. <laughs> <laughs> sneaking, it's like, okay, get up. And it, well, you know, but it was great, but we're doing this bone cage thing, and I'm, it's one thing to go back and forth. But this thing's on a singular wire, or supposed to be right, 
and it starts spinning like a like a pocket watch. And I'm like, all right, get me down, get me down, I'm gonna puke. But what was funny was we, we were doing it over this blue screen. And uh, and as as they let him down and let him off, I heard about four voices shouting, "Not on the blue screen!" <laughs> they didn't want to see vomit dripping down what would be the side of the mountain. <laughs> so, so I get I get out. They're like, "No, no, no! We're just gonna be a couple more takes." And we're like, "I was like, no, get him down! He's gonna puke!" So they lowered me down, and oh, the thing literally, any of one of us could have dropped out. The hole. We were all really bracing ourselves, but if you wanted to jump out, you could have jumped out. So I literally jumped out and ran for the corner, and I get behind the screen, and I'm thinking, oh, yes. And all of a sudden, I, I feel something behind me, and there's Gore's like, hello. Oh. So the cameraman just goes over with the <laughs> And that day, I wasn't feeling, I wasn't feeling great. And I had drank three of those purple games. And craft service is, we, are, we had the bomb, didn't we? The best guess. But his brownies were to die for. And I had four of those rich fucking brownies. <laughs> more bath than he looks like. <laughs> Thank God I wasn't in that sequence. Uh, I mean, there's, listen, there were so many wild ass days on the movie, to be honest. But I mean, the typical, a typical story would be like this. We're doing the scene where me and Mackenzie are, are in the rowboat with the dog at the beginning of the second film, right? And we've just done the whole thing. I'm like, you, you know you can't read. What's the Bible? You're going to be trying. And then, like, the dog, what's got a name? Must have seen a catfish. And, the, and, the, and the, the dog jumps out, starts paddling, and we're like, what an idiot. And then we wipe out, right? So the dinghy weighed about 800 pounds. So all the rest of the action of the movie, we're doing. I mean, this is one thing you gotta understand. When they, when they say that the actor does stunts, that's not really always true. The actor always does the action. Anytime you can't see the dude's face, it's not the dude, it's his double. Except, well, except when you're a real <laughs> So, we have the piece where the boat flips with the double. We have the piece where I'm going like, must have seen a catfish. And then we need the piece where me and Mackenzie are drowning, and then we get to shore. So, Gore's like, this is a separate place. The water is so gnarly. I've lived at the beach my whole life. I know what a riptide is. It was the most massive rip you've ever seen. He's like, get out there um, and, and drown for me. And I'm, like, I'm like, hold on. Bro. I got Larry Rippin Kroger on the, on the jet ski. Who's on, I, I was a smoker in Waterworld. So I'm one of Dennis Hopper's dudes. I'm driving the world. This is my buddy from Waterworld. He's got my back. You always want to love your stunties because they're going to save your life. You always want to be nice to your safety guys on the crew because they're going to put you out when you catch on fire accidentally, right? So I was lucky the guys liked me. I'm like, I'll drown for you, but I got a question. I'm a hell of an actor, Gore. How are you really going to know if I'm acting like I'm drowning or really drowning, right? So he goes, I don't know that I really care. He goes, he goes in fact, Odell, our medic. He goes, Odell, yes boss. Hey, you can revive these guys up until four minutes. No boss, seven minutes. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I gotta go drown for 5.5. .5. Um, I didn't know Gore subscribed to the James Cameron School of- Oh, for real? When the, in, in P3, when me and Mackenzie were upside down on the mast, um, we're, we're literally tied to the mast. Okay, we're upside down. We did many pieces. There's a mask that flips this way. They do it in little sections. But there's a wide shot where we're literally tied to the mask. The rest of the cast is all laid out like they've been buried under the water. Yeah, big accident. Yeah, we had an, a stud man that got his head skull crashed by the water when they were shooting that. It was a dangerous sequence. We're about, we're about this high up on the, the deck, and stunt guys, there's a, everybody's always trying to be the guy to either be the first one in or get the best shot. Well, the guy was not doubling him, but doubling Barbosa, and 
did the first time, it was great, and we're talking um, one of those big garbage bins, probably as long as this room, full of seawater. And it would be above us, and it would be like, okay, on three, we're gonna go. And it would be three, two, one. And then we would all jump as they were dumping all that water from within. So it literally was gonna push you. And he went a little bit too early this one time, and it shoved him all the way to the side of the boat. And on the side of the boat were these big wooden things that held the cannonballs, and they were solid wood. And it crushed his, his eye socket. And it was just like really gnarly to see like, you know, blood everywhere. Tommy so, I mean, DuPont instant, yeah. we, I mean, medevac, Jerry brought in the helicopter. I mean, it was life or death. He was rushed to Miami for Miami. brain surgery. And we went to Miami, just some yeah. flew straight it's to Miami. Miami. You don't mess around with yeah. yeah. Bohemian doctor, so. <laughs> yeah, so, it's, I mean, that's the fun of it, though. I mean, luckily, we, we did have some people you get banged up. Um, and, I mean, no offense to the stunt community, but that's their job. That's our job. You're taking the hit for the star. And, you know, that's why there's a lot of respect in the community for your stuntees. Because you know that at the end of the day, they're there to take the hit for you. Um, or, if nothing else, train you with the economy of motion and the fighting. They become your personal kind of bodyguard, watching out for their actors, you know? And not only studying your mannerisms, your movement, to be able to copy it in their shots, but also when you're there, to give you the notes to make you look better. And it gets way easier to experience anything when you're thinking like a team player, always trying to help each other. The family. Yeah, and that, we were lucky that that's what yeah, we got yeah, to experience. We had a crew of a thousand people and we were, we were a family. There was one time when we were in the Bahamas and um, my makeup artist had half people uh, scuba diving. And it was a three day weekend, so we were off on Monday. Tuesday morning, they're supposed to, the makeup guys are supposed to be ready at like 3 30 in the morning. And he didn't report down there that morning. And they kept calling and calling and calling. And finally, they sent security there, but it was locked. Then they had to get permission from production and whoever else to break in. And they found him. He had, um, I don't know if it was from coming up too fast, or bigger, but he had a massive heart attack, right? Or was it an aneurysm that? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I ever knew, but it was just. Yeah. So, and then, you, you know, the wildest funeral I've ever been is a, is a Viking funeral. Like, see, you know, in honor, you've got thousands of people out there watching this, you know, boat out there. Orlando get, gets up and does a eulogy and a, you know, a couple other people and, and then you just have one guy shoot up a flaming arrow into this boat and then it just goes below the sea and you're just like, wow. Rest this poor guy had twin daughters. Yeah, Richard Twin baby daughters too. Yeah, so we had, I mean, so, and then people were, I mean, we had, you know, you're working with people for five years, you got marriages, divorces, babies born, and unfortunately, uh, the death of Richard. Yeah, so in a lot of ways, the movie after that point was all dedicated to his memory and you know that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's what got Jeff Payton, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good I saw that. Mm -hmm. Before I jump into this, what I say this, I'm at our audience, everybody else. I just want to thank all three of each other. Uh, thank you for the <laughs> Professionalism. I think the performances you brought to these roles, to this franchise, which is just has an undying love. And thank you all. And thank you all for joining us this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, go ahead, take some hands. Y'all know the rules. Press the direct to everybody. All right. Actually, we got. I tell you what. We got a lot. So let's do a line. Let's do a line starting right here. That's it. All right. So come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. All right. Alright, I'll take you, I'll take, I'll take you first. Okay. Alright, go ahead. What's your name? What you got? Denise. Well, yeah. Two sides. Playing, of course, Jack. What other character would you like to play besides the one that you actually did? Ooh. Not Jack. Well, my favorite character was Barbosa. I, I mean, I was just always enamored with watching Barbosa. I, I think it was Barbosa for me as well. In fact, um, at the, uh, at the read through, I remember I had the first line, which is quiet, cursed pirates sail these waters. And uh, he said, he said, oh shit, that's the voice I was going to do. <laughs> so I said, I said, look, it's very simple. We just won't have anybody talking. Like, we never talk next to each other. And then there was a line when he had to say to me in the second film, 
Have you ever seen the green flash? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever seen the green flash? They said, yes, I think I've seen my fair share. And so we had to get uh, Lee to do a line in between us so people would notice yeah, yeah. that we were giving exactly the same before. Uh, I mean, I'm going to say something. I would like to see Tia Dharma. Tia Dharma. I'm a Tia Dharma guy. What's your name? What do you have? Rum. <laughs> uh, I got a fat house in the mountains. Marty does or Marty? I do. No, no. no both Marty. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, my kid, what was my character's name at first? Derek. Dirk. Dirk. Oh, Dirk. Oh, Dirk. Yeah. Who answered that? Somebody. Who was it? that? I, I mean, honestly, for me, the best part about it was like pairing up and being part of a classic double act. And see, yeah. it was pretty cool. We were such opposite dudes. We were. I was assigned by Gore. The uh, he's like, I want you to become this guy's best friend. And uh, it was that was pretty magical to work with a legendary dude like that, super talented guy, totally my opposite. And then we so that we created the backstory because I, I was like. It's just too obvious if we're lovers, I'd say, Mackenzie. So you're my nephew. Uh, your, your, your mom is my sister. She gave you what I went to see. And that's how we justified our loving relationship, was uncle to nephew. And you can read between the lines for the other stuff. It's a pirate ship. Hey, what's your name? My name is Brandon. What you got? You guys kind of know the coffee guy. But, um, Everybody asks though is the question, how does it work? How is it like working with Johnny? I'm gonna scrap that. What's it like working with Orlando and um, Karen Knightley instead? Oh, I love I love both of them. I mean there, it was weird because I would get the feeling that not everybody thought Orlando was that great of an actor, but I always enjoyed him and he was always a great guy. Like, they, they were like very young. They were very young at the time. So that we we sort of saw them learning. I mean yeah, because she was what, sixteen when the first started, right? Yeah, I think it's just, yeah. just 2017. Yeah. I mean, I want to say this. 70s, though. There's a one thing about Jerry, another another credit to them is the ability to, like, you know, pick the rising star. So there's something like watching a supernova like fire. Because I remember watching Bend It Like Beckham, which had basically just come out when we started making the movie. And I loved that movie, and I loved Kira, and and, and I just knew she was raised in the in the theater. She was already a pro. She'd already done that Doctor Zhivago. She was an experienced actor, and she was the only woman with all these dudes. And she would just be sitting with her Russian literature, quiet, as the rest of us are like schmoozing about, you know. So she had the composure of a legend already. And for Orlando. He was the kind of guy that would invite you out and really mean it. Oh, yeah. He's one of the more genuine dudes. He's like, come to my house, we're having a party. And he had like three margarita machines. Do you remember that one? Yeah, and he had You, you, you would invite him to parties with Orlando? <laughs> yeah, and he was dating Kate Bosworth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Kate Bosworth, too. And yeah. Kate Bosworth took so many drinks and a little ass. Bikini. Uh, There's Orlando like flipping burgers and hot dogs. Yeah, like, legit. How cool is this? He got yeah, his cool. career waiting to us. Cool. Yeah. And then, um, to back up what he said about um, Jerry Brookheimer, he also discovered Zoe Saldana in the first film. Yeah. 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 Hey, what's your name? Hi, I'm Emily. What's she got? Uh, so, my question is you kind of touched on this a little bit, but the pirate scene franchise, or not franchise, the pirate genre was pretty much dead. Yeah. Was there a point while filming? that you were like, what am I doing? I'm standing on a boat in this ridiculous outfit. Like, was there just a time where you were like, I do not understand what I am doing here? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> After the first movie, I loved every goddamn minute of it. Like, yeah. I have a candle at home that actually somebody gave me, and it smells, I don't know how they got it, but they had the smell of the black pearl. And, this, and every day I go through the window, I go, <laughs> it, it, it totally smells like how we were on the black pearl, that smell of down below and all that stuff. Yeah, I'll, well, the smell of your buff. It's funny you going to come. There was no, you know. Uh, I would say 
no too to that. It was, you know, it started right away. They sent us to pirate school. Oh yeah. We had like a month of, of, of na we all had to learn how to be British naval sailors. So there was two groups. They would train the sailors and they would train the pirates. We all had to learn how to row and knew all the commands of being in the Navy because we all would have been in the Navy and then become pirates. So it was the layering up of that. So the, the pirate starts out fighting and then fights dirty. So that would be the thing. The other thing that we really need to mention and, and, and someone that I really owe a lot to was the late great Bob Anderson, our sword master, who was Darth Vader, who used to be Errol Flynn's stunt double, who's an absolute legend in, in Hollywood. And we had the opportunity to learn how to sword fight from him at Debbie Reynolds Dance Studio. And I used to hang out with Debbie Reynolds because I'm a big old time Hollywood fan. Me and Debbie, she'd always give me a squeeze. She rooted for us when we came back for the next one. I mean, it's just like you felt like you were into something right away that was cool and special. And listen, I was one of the few, me and Marty, Americans in the movie. I had to do a dialect. There was a dialect coach from Juilliard. No one else is using him. So I'm like, you're my dog. And you put the work in. This is an actor, that's the most, the most awesome thing they can do for you is let you rehearse and let you prepare. So many movies, you just gotta show up, what do you got? <coughs> Pirates really believed in us. And, that was and the worst, my, my accent changed in this. Your accent did change. <laughs> but you were so uptight about it, we were all like, it's perfect. Yeah. You're, you know. Daddy. No, people would say, my uh, yeah, the the Paul once said to me, he said, what do you think about Marty's accent? I said, all of them are terrific. <laughs> You know, comedy night was much better. Yeah. So, you know, it was a more serious thing with Barbosa. It was probably better and more successful pirating with him. So for my bloodthirsty stuff, you definitely want Bar uh, Hector Barbosa. He's a badass pirate. And then with, uh, but for lightness, for fun, for just the, uh, hey, sailor, uh, that's Captain Jack. Right? I mean, and that was, that was the whole vibe, too. Like, it was fun. We would be you know, out there with these guys, and, and everyone knows their character, but we'd be in the middle of some story, like mostly Kevin and Jeff Rush would be telling some great joke, and then they're like, we're rolling, guys! Then we play this dramatic scene, as soon as they go cut, they're right back into it, you know? Oh, man, I, I don't know, your riddles and shit were like, I looked forward to those every day, you and Jeff were Yeah, they really like the way. We're, we're all like on the beach, and be like, eight stupid stuff guys going, I don't, I don't get it. He's in the middle of a room, puddle of water. He hung himself because he stood on a block of ice and it melted. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. So it was, I mean, it, there's a lot of fun. It's a long day making movies, right? But for me, I just like to be invited to the party. And it did feel better being on Jack's crew. That second movie is the one for me because I got to be a hero. You know, and, and later got to be here all once upon a time, but for the most part in my career up to that time I was a baddie, you know, and uh, I like heroes. It's good, you know, like heels, there's heels in, uh, what, in, in wrestling, there's, yeah, the face. Gen gentlemen, same That's question. It. What, uh, what captain? Ultimately, what you follow? Yeah. <laughs> Even if the question seems well, obvious. I'm, I'm a Jack guy, but again, I'm just, there's something about Barbosa that was always intriguing me. I just, everything about, he never not. The ultimate badass pirate, but you know Jack is Jack. I mean, Jack was afraid of Barbosa, so in our world, I think he was the most dangerous <laughs> until the baddies like South Fang. How about Chow Yun Fat? Oh yeah. No, for me, it's Jack all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you're a homer. You're the, that's the most obvious answer of all time. You're, you're, you're his guy. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, how lucky is that? Your best friend's a child. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think you know, I, more baby. I think I think I, I read somebody said that Jack is the better pilot, but Barbosa is the better captain. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, that effect. Well, who, who do you choose? Oh man, that's kind of hard. I just love them both. I love Jack for his sense of humor and how he improvises and everything, but. Barbosa's kind of like dramatic and everything, and he has the best laugh in the Caribbean. And when Jack and Barbosa are bigger, it kind of reminds me of me and my sister when we have yeah. our like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. Great question. Thank you. There you go. Hey, what's your name? Lillian. Hey, Lillian, what do you want to know? Why do you swear so much? <laughs> <laughs> so, you hot shit. We'll get to it. Okay, I, I can tell you mine instantly because I've been asked that several times today. Mine is a slap me thrice and hand me to me, Mama, it's Jack. <laughs> I mean, mine's definitely on top of it. Yeah, it's gotta be on it. Yeah, but I have some good ones in the parlay bit. I like, I'm telling the story. Yeah, it's usually any time I got to scream. Yeah. That's kind of my specialty as an actor, I scream. And I know yours, Marty. Yeah. You know why? What is it? Do you think Jack has been acting in the bin? No. No, what is it? As a man, just me. What? As a man, just me. me. The captain seems to be acting a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something, and I, I, but I need to go up on stage. I'm not a stalker, I swear. <laughs> Are you sure, Keith? <laughs> so Lee, Lee mentioned a minute ago about pirate school. What he didn't say is none of them went on to college because the best thing to do is high seats. <laughs> Anyway, my name is uh, Keith Carson. I'm known professionally as Captain Kid Carson. And I want to talk just a minute, give me uh, a few minutes to talk about the International Pirate Hall of Fame. Um, it was founded by a small group of archaeologists and historians and took many years to put together and it launched in uh, 2020. It's a nonprofit organization. It's the only internationally recognized Hall of Fame honoring and paying tribute to pirates and pirate-related performers. This includes uh, authors, musicians, artisans, and others involved in the golden age of pirates, so real pirates as well as modern-day people involved in uh, pirates. Um, the Hall of Fame is funded by individual contributions, corporate donations, and private foundations. And if you want to learn more, go to piratehalloffame.org. Uh, in 2021, um, I was blessed to be inducted into the Hall of Fame with this man, Kevin McNally. In 2022, when um, I obviously learned, learned about it, the process, um, I nominated that gentleman at the end, Mark McClebba. And Martin was inducted in the class of 2022. They pick uh, 10 uh, each year. In 2021, when Kevin and I were inducted, there was a 400 and some odd nominations. Um, this last go-round, I had the honor of nominating Lee last year, uh, and there were approximately 500 um, nominations. So Lee's been notified that he's made the top 30 um, from down from 500. They started announcing to the public all the 10 inductees um, this month. So I want to congratulate my fellow Hall of Fame inductees, and I want to wish uh, Lee the best of luck, and please give them a round of applause. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know what, I, I should probably be using my notes, because even though the 2023 uh, inductees have not been announced yet to the public, I've been given permission to announce you, Oh, 2023. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. This is cool. You know, you don't set out for that kind of stuff, but 
you know, to get to leave a mark in such a cool way, and, you know, I identify with being a pirate for life, so now I guess you're stuck with me, brother. Thank you for everything, man. So, so in, in light of this information, I'm handing back my... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, the award is a beautiful custom-made award. Um, they'll be going into production soon, but in the meantime... Wow. There you go. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>